Namaste, and welcome to another episode of The Esoteric Teaching. Today I want to talk about the dynamics of the path. So far we've been presenting this esoteric teaching as more or less of a linear sequence. Well, first you go through the fall a bunch of times and come around and take birth again and again until you finally get sick and tired of it. And then you decide you're going to do something about it. And so you try to approach the path. And what happens? Does anybody just start on the path and then get right view right away and get initiated and then go up through all the yogas step by step? Hardly ever. Only in very rare individuals does this happen. And that's because they've been on the path already for lifetimes and they already know it. It's in their bones. Huh? What usually happens is that someone will begin the path and then fall down. What's the difference between the fall and falling down? Well, the fall happens because of ignorance. And falling down happens because of lack of right view. So what happens when someone falls down? Well, it depends on where they fall from and how much credit or how much experience they have in the previous stages of the path. Someone who's just starting out, who is, for example, uh, entering into conventional religion, after having been, for all practical purposes, an atheist. <laughs> you know, just following their senses around and getting beat up by karma and stuff like that. And they say, okay, I'm tired of this. I've hit bottom. Now I'm going to get religion. And so they go into ordinary religion. And do they reach right view? No, not a prayer. Why? Because... In ordinary religion, there is no right view. <laughs> right view is only available through esoteric religion and a realized teacher, a spiritual master. So until someone comes to the point of accepting a spiritual master, a real spiritual master, not a phony one, not a commercial one, uh, but an actual realized being as a spiritual master, he's going to fall down. Because in religion, there are so many rules and regulations. Religion is based on morality. Morality is like, do this and don't do that. In yoga, morality is called yama niyama. What to do, what not to do. So, a person who tries to raise themselves up to realization through ordinary religion is going to hit a point where it doesn't work anymore. And then they have a couple of choices. They can go into denial and say, well, um, it doesn't work because of this or that other excuse. And just keep doing what they're doing, even though it's ineffective. Or they can, if they're more honest, <laughs> they can go back to where they were before and we see this happen all the time. It happens on a daily basis with some people. Huh? And it happens on a regular uh, basis with others. That they'll get into religion, they'll start to study the books, and do some of the practices and all. And then they'll give up. Now, I use the choice of words here deliberately, that they'll give up. In other words, it's not due to any fault in the process of religion. Rather, they have not integrated their experience properly to understand what really happened. What really happened was they had insufficient knowledge for right view. So, of course, their process wasn't working. Huh? But what happens? They go back to being an ordinary person. In other words, they go back to the fall. 
Now, why is this called falling down? Because they were on a higher platform. They were on a platform that does lead to self-realization eventually. They were on the path, at least to some degree. And then they fall again back into the fall that's falling down. Okay, so the reason we arrange the steps of the path in the way they are is that this is really the way it plays out in life. Now, of course, uh, Uladu Narpadu, Bhagwan's masterpiece of uh, the instructions given to the Karmakandis, uh, is just the perfect expression of the path. And it also puts these yogas in the proper order. In other words, you take instruction from a spiritual master until he's satisfied with you. Then you get initiation. Whether initiation comes by a ceremony, in which cases it's mostly incomplete, <laughs> or whether initiation is spontaneous and inner, coming from the Chaita Guru, the Guru in the heart, then it's real, then it's authentic. And then one can go on to the higher stages of bhakti. Karma yoga, I'm sorry. Because in karma yoga, what is going on is one is creating the platform for further self-realization. So in karma yoga, one does one's duty. And duty is defined in terms of four orders of life and four social classes. Varna ashram. Varna ashram means brahmachari, grihastha, vanaprastha, and sannyas, the four stages of life. Student life, household life, retired life, and renounced life. And the four uh, ashrams are or sorry, varnas are the Brahmana Varna, Kshatriya Varna, Vaishya, and Sudra Varnas. Now, in modern times, these have become solidified and objectified into hard-coded castes, but this is wrong. What does Bhagavad Gita say? Chatur Varnyam Maya Shrishtam Guna Karma Vibhagasaha Guna and karma, by quality and work, I have divided them. They're just classes. They're just categories. Huh? They're just types so that you can know what type of person you are or what type of person you're dealing with and what their duty is or should be. Okay, Because the rules or recommendations of the scriptures differ in terms of the different classes. This is so common sense. Huh? The kind of person, for example, who is not fit for anything other than to serve others is a shudra, and society is comprised of more than 90% of this type of people. They can only follow. They're not fit to lead. And if they do happen somehow or other to get in a position of leadership, like in the U.S. today, it's a disaster. Huh? So we see that when a person is not fit to lead, their dharma is to follow. And who do they follow? People who are more intelligent. People who are more able. This is a natural thing in life. It happens anyway. Huh? We're just giving it labels. We're just giving it tags, concepts, so that we can understand what's going on. So in karma yoga, one is supposed to do one's duty, whether to follow others and work for them, or to make business and make money, vaishas, or to administrate and lead society as the kshatriyas, or to get knowledge and to lead, to be an idea or a thought leader. That's a brahmana. So these four classes exist anyway. We're just giving names to them. And the four stages of life, student life, married life, retired, and renounced life. These are going on anyway. So try to understand. These are just guidelines to try to help us understand what is our dharma, what is our duty. 
and we should perform that duty without attachment. That's why it's karma yoga. Why? So that we have the facility to perform the higher stages of yoga, bhakti, raja, and jnana. Now, bhakti yoga, there are three stages in bhakti yoga. Vaidhi bhakti, which is rules and regulations. Uh, Raga nuga bhakti, which is spontaneous ecstatic love. And ananya bhakti. Ananya bhakti means that one does not see God as a separate being, but as the self. And we're going to do a series on bhakti and go into this in great detail in the near future. So I'm not going to go into it much now. But uh, these are stages similar to the categories in the karma yoga stage. And if one cannot complete the realization of the stage he's in, guess what happens? He falls down back into karma yoga. Just as if one cannot complete the tasks or duties of karma yoga, he falls down back into needing instruction from the spiritual master until he gets it right. Similarly, someone who graduates from bhakti naturally into raja yoga will go from worshiping God in whatever form or formless uh, aspect he chooses into meditation. And by that meditation, he becomes empty. And this is the whole realization of Raja Yoga. The Buddha's teaching fits nicely into the category of Raja Yoga. So what happens if someone fails at meditation? They fall back down into bhakti. And this happened to me. All of this happened to me. All of this happens to everyone on the path. They may not realize it. Sometimes, if it's an especially egregious fall, they may go all the way back to uh, ordinary life. But still, these cycles, these stages, are the path. There's no getting away from it. So if one goes through all the stages of yoga, uh, karma, bhakti, and raja, then he becomes eligible for jnana. Jnana is the stage of realization. It's the stage where one uh, becomes empty through meditation, Raja Yoga, and then is filled up again <laughs> from within by God. And so this is the highest, the final stage. If one has Jnana, then one is always in bliss, in ecstasy. Uh, uh, and, and not due to thinking, oh, I'm in love with God and God is protecting me and like that, God is reciprocating, but that I have become empty and God has filled me with his own self. And I am he, I am that, soham, tatramasi. This is the highest stage. Now, this stage is barely conceivable or maybe even inconceivable to someone in the lower stages. But yet we see that before one can reach this stage, whether in this life or in some previous life, one has to go through the other lower stages and attain perfection in those stages. So this is the path. The path is dynamic. It's not static. The path is cyclical. Huh? It's not linear. That's why we talked before about holographic. It's multidimensional. It's not simply linear. And all these things are going on. Uh, I've experienced them all in my life. I don't want to tell you my life story because <laughs> it's not in your business. But I walked the same path and I fell down many times and so will you. So if a person takes a position, a hard position in any of these categories, this is the problem. If and when he makes a mistake and falls down, 
he will not be able to adjust. For example, if a person takes a position in a spiritual organization of a certain teaching, let's say bhakti yoga, for example, and then they fall down. Well, it's very hard for them in the beginning to admit it because now their social standing, uh, maybe their livelihood, their place of residence and so on, depend on their keeping that stage of bhakti. Now, it also works in reverse. When a person graduates from bhakti and they go to a higher stage, just by the nature of the process, they may have a hard time recognizing or admitting that what's happening. Because again, in order to actually advance to that higher stage, they may have to give up everything external and move to a different platform in life. So this is the problem. This is the problem with externalizing, objectifying, and having hard beliefs about one's status of life, about one's process of self-realization. That one's should, one should always be a little tentative, ready to revise one's belief and one's image of oneself um, depending on what happens within. Depending on what happens in the inner life, one should be ready to reconstitute, refactor, and adapt the external life to fit. That's actually karma yoga. If someone has successfully finished karma yoga, they will have the uh, ability to be independent and to determine their own course in life. And that way, when the inner circumstances change, they can adjust the outer circumstances to, to match and to support them. Uh, for example, when I was a Buddhist monk, I, I knew that someday I would reach a stage where I would give up being a monk. So I never gave up my pension. I never gave up my independence emotionally or intellectually. And so when that stage came, when I had realized fourth path, and I realized, wow, I got this, I'm out of here. <laughs> then I immediately was able to drop being a monk, although it took some time to make the adjustment, I was able to make the adjustment. Whereas others who reached the end of their uh, being a monk, an honest monk, huh, will still keep the outward aspects of that monk lifestyle will still maintain some position in some organization that is not real. It's not authentic uh, because they haven't finished their karma yoga. So the, the stage, the next step for them would be to go back to karma yoga, finish that up and gain their independence so that they can go through the rest of the stages without any problem. And similarly with the other steps. If one fails at meditation, he has to go back to bhakti. If one fails at jnana, he has to go back to meditation. So, confirmed. <laughs> kind of windy here today. So, what we have to do is to look at the path in perspective and not be identified with a particular stage or a particular practice. And this will allow us to adapt as inner circumstances change and to reach the final stage, which is self-realization, realization of Brahman. Om Tat Sat. Om Harihi Om.